Thor News presents WTF R Neutron Stars. R Solar Flares and Coronal Mass Ejections Caused by a Neutron Star Pulling Gases from Our Sun? Our Star? That's just a question I was thinking, because I think of crazy questions like that, because that's what learning is about. Figure something out, only to find more questions. So, I have been fascinated by neutron stars ever since I learned of them. Okay, interesting things about neutron stars. They contain 500,000 times the mass of Earth in a sphere with a diameter no larger than Brooklyn. A teaspoon of matter of the neutron stars weighs more than 50 X-class battleships. That's literally and metaphorically some heavy shit, man. I always thought like, man, if you took some of the material like the Supra Iron from the neutron star and made a suit of armor out of it, that armor would be so badass. But you'd have to be like Superman or Thor to wear it, I imagine. You see, the density is approximately the equivalent to the mass of a Boeing 747 compressed to the size of a grain of salt. Or is it the grain of sand? Which average size is bigger? Is it a grain of sand or is it a grain of salt? Does anybody know? I need to know and I need to know right now. I cannot continue on with this video. Wait, I can. Neutron stars are very hot. They're about 20 kilometers in diameter with a mass 1.4 times our sun. Like let's say one teaspoon of its matter would be over a billion tons on Earth. Because of its small size and high density, neutron stars possess a surface gravitational field two to 10 times, wait, two times 10 to the 11th power times that of Earth. I don't, I don't know, can somebody do that math for me? Neutron stars can also have magnetic fields a million times stronger than the strongest magnetic fields pr produced on Earth. Okay, I know there's a lot of math. I'm not even a big fan of math. It just kind of gives you the idea. Try to think of teaspoons, millions, billions, fields, and mass, and density, and stuff, okay? Good. Okay, thanks. Okay. Neutron stars either collapse into each other or separate and go and grow and combine with something else or whatever. Insert your own stellar sequencing pseudoscience theory here. Or something like that. Sidebar. I wonder if Sedna is like a strange neutron star baby hybrid. Note to self. Do a new Sedna video. A neutron star is a type of stellar remnant that can result from a gravitational collapse of a massive star during a type 2, type 1b, or type 1c event, supernova event. Such stars are composed almost entirely of neutrons, which are subatomic particles without net electrical charge and with slightly larger mass than protons. Neutron stars are very hot and, and are supported against further collapse by quantum degeneracy pressure due to the phenomenon described by the Pauli exclusion principle. Pauli. Yeah, you remember Pauli. He's the guy you don't want to mess with. Pauli. The principle states that no two neutrons or any other fermionic particles can occupy the same place and quantum state simultaneously. Or as I like to call it, the Kitty Pride theory. Kitty Pride principle, uh, where Kitty Pride is the anomaly. She can both occupy the same place and quantum state simultaneously without disruption. Uh, you'll have to look further into the X-Men. I cannot explain it this, this time. Wikipedia. NASA and company says that the density in the crust of a neutron star varies. Uh, wait, how the heck do you guys know? Oh yeah, you guys took a photograph of it 100 billion light years away and judge from that little speck of light and that just what its crust is like. Very interesting. I mean, to me, that's kind of like worse than saying a uh, chick is hot because you saw her internet dating profile pictures, man. Like, I understand um, that you've learned a lot about neutron stars by taking photographs of them and looking at their little shining light their little pixels but to really know about neutron stars we're probably gonna have to investigate them closer or the neutron stars then gonna investigate us closer you see compact stars of less than 1.44 solar masses what they call the chandra sekhar limit are white dwarf now this is interesting populations and distances at present there are about 2,000 known neutron stars in the milky way and the magellanic clouds, the majority of which have been detected as radio pulsars. The population of neutron stars is concentrated along the disk of the Milky Way, although the spread perpendicular to the disk is fairly large. The reason for this spread is due to the symmetry of the supernova explosion process. You see, on the basis of current models, the matter at the surface of a neutron star is composed of ordinary atomic nuclei crushed into a solid lattice with a sea of electrons flowing through the gaps between them. It is possible that the nuclei at the surface are iron, or what Thor likes to call supra-iron, due to iron's high binding per nucleon. The surface should be fluid instead of the solid state phase 
observed in cooler neutron stars. Oh, they heard cooler neutron stars? I thought neutron stars were pretty cool. But to know that there are cooler neutron stars than cool neutron stars, that would be cool. The atmosphere of one of these stars is hypothesized to be at most several micrometers thick, and its dynamic is fully controlled by the star's magnetic field. You see, the crust is very hard and smooth because of the extreme gravitational field. I know a girl like that once. Neutron drip, that's my new insult. The composition of the super dense matter in the core remains uncertain. Duh, I could have told you that. Technically, I'd say most of this stuff is theories and it's uncertain a little, wouldn't you say? Anyway, we're talking about super fluid neutron degenerate matter. Thor news break here. I like neutron stars because they are smaller, badass, or cooler versions of our star. And I love our star, the sun. I'm perfectly happy with it, no complaints. But I'm saying if there is a cooler star than our sun, that's pretty cool too. All right, let's go down the history of discovery, shall we? In 1934, Walter Bad and Fritz Zwicky, so Bad and Zwicky, proposed the existence of the neutron star only one year after the discovery. Wait, isn't that shit backwards? So these two dudes proposed its existence a year after it was discovered. What were they in government? But I'm bumped. Don't worry, I'll be here all week, folks. In seeking an explanation for the origin of a supernova, they proposed that the neutron star is formed in a supernova. Supernova are suddenly appearing dying stars in the sky whose luminosity is visible light that can outshine an entire galaxy for days to weeks. In the supernova process, the mass bulk is annihilated and all that's left is the super awesome stuff. Well, in 1965, Anthony Hewish and Samuel Okoye discovered an unusual source of high radio brightness temperature in the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula neutron star that resulted from the great supernova of 1054. And you see they figured out, they found the Crab Nebula neutron star that resulted from the great supernova of 1054. That is pretty dang cool. See about 5% of neutron stars are members of a binary system. The formation and the evolution scenario of binary neutron stars is a rather exotic and complicated process. Companion stars may either be ordinary stars like ours, or white dwarfs, or even other neutron stars. But could they be black holes? Anyway, so yeah, these neutron stars, man. These neutron stars, they are cool. I like them. I think we'll need to know more. Holy crap, I have a lot more notes. Holy crap, I have a lot more notes. Okay, get ready. Neutron stars are one of the possible ends of a star. Oh, really? I would think that any phase the star dies in is a possible end phase of a star. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they all make it from year one to year end one or whatever. Terra rain from the sky. We'll cover that later. You see, a neutron star you has to have four to eight times the mass of the sun. And so what happens is you got, you got a giant star four to eight times the mass of our sun. It finishes burning its fuel and then it supernovas. The explosion blows off the outer layers, the central region of the star, collapses under its own gravity. It collapses so much that protons and electrons combine to form neutrons. Well, now that is science's definition. And a lot of times, science talks about the sun or stars like they're a car engine. You know, like this is how they run and this is what they do and this is how long they last. But sometimes I think that stars are a lot more like eggs and, and you never know, man. They could, you never know what an egg's gonna do. You know, it's, an egg is way different than, than, a, than, a, than, a, than a car engine. You know? There are four known neutron stars that are thought to have planets. Well, isn't that very interesting? There are certain ways science uses to distinguish a neutron star from a black hole. Pulsars shoot out at neutron stars sometimes. And pulsars were discovered in 1967. Pulsars are like high radio frequencies that blink on and off at constant rates at from the poles of the neutron star. Some pulsars emit x-rays. Whoa, too much information. Some pulsars emit rays of all types of all types on the spectrum. Maybe even rays we don't know. Wow, let's hop over here. The Book of Nash. All right, so yeah, a lot of fact finding. We're talking about neutron stars. Um, I'm wondering if pictures of the sun, we the star we usually see with the neutron stars, like big yellow giant, kind of like ours with its own heliosphere, which is what we have in both shock and shit. I'm wondering, hey man, like, do we have a neutron star that is leading the front of our star? star sun like it's the bow of the ship or the captain or, or the sail or whatever you know like i think stars are probably pretty complicated at the end of the day and knowing there are trillions of them probably like people like if you have people if you have a trillion people i bet all trillion of those people are going to be different in one way or another you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying do you understand me is this thing on can you hear me did you really stay towards the end oh man i didn't know if you would because i had a couple drinks tonight this cat dragon lady was like have a drink with me. So I had to, and I did, and it was great. Wow, did you really stay all the way to the end? Well then I will reward your patience, your perseverance, and your loyalty with an old video I did about the first footage of a neutron star that NASA put out. 
we have here is NASA's first captured footage of a neutron star from across the universe. You can see it's interacting with a binary companion. Almost looks like an umbilical cord. NASA's first capture of a neutron star. All I'm saying is this looks like something that looks like something else. I know it hurts your brain when I talk about celestial physics, Junior, but... Footage from across the universe. Yes, indeed. Flipping it around on one of my program thingies, y'all. And here's the deal. Check it out. Looks just like a shaman mask. Shaman? Shaman. 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 Yeah, my buddy plays World of Warcraft. He's got a shaman. 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 A shaman mask? Neutron star. Shaman mask. Shaman mask. Neutron star. Shaman mask. Neutron star. Woo. Or a dragon. That's about it. You could pick. Like, it's a shaman mask or it's a dragon. Woo! It's a shaman mask or a dragon. All I'm saying, man, is this looks like something that looks like something else. Don't you get mad. I'm not implying any type of doom at all. I'm just saying that this looks cool. And not only that, but... It looks like a shaman mask, or a warrior mask, or some type of a freaking mask, man. Just kidding. Whatever. Shaman mask. I've got the motherfucking Jedi blues, baby. You wouldn't understand. Ancient past.